Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the tutorial on Swagger, where you're going to see how Swagger works, and we are going to plan out the endpoints for an API. So as usual, I've got my website open right here. It's got the resources that you need. You want to get to it, go ahead and click the link below this video. And while you're down there, you can hit the subscribe button for the YouTube channel. And it's a good idea to also pay attention to the directory for our website, because this is part of the API series. I've got a bunch of videos and I'm adding more that are teaching you how to make an API. So if you haven't watched the first series, I'm going to assume that you have. Just go ahead and watch the video on it or get to this page and you'll see that it teaches you what APIs are, but I'm assuming you already know that. So what is Swagger? We'll get to that in a second. But more importantly, we need to plan for an API. So we know what an API is. It's basically a function over the internet and we want to make our own for some reason. So here's the scenario. We are, this is a made up scenario, by the way, that we're using for this planning example, which we're going to use to show how to make a Swagger um, document. And then we're going to use that Swagger document to actually implement the API in Node and Java. So here's our situation. We own the website to a warehouse company and our warehouse has a certain number of fruits inside of it. We get fruit shipments in. So, so sometimes fruits come in from Guatemala or some tropical place and we have more fruits added to our warehouse. And sometimes stores order our fruits, so we sell them off and we decrease our quantity of fruits in our warehouse. So what we want to do is have a website that basically is able to track how many fruits we have. And the way we do this is, let's say we have a database that stores the number of fruits. So, so our database has 20 apples in it listed right now, and it's got 15 grapes. 19 bananas, I don't know, some certain amount of numbers. And anytime a new shipment comes in, we have to add to this database. And anytime we sell fruits, then that fruit has to get marked down in our database so that our database maintains how many fruits we actually have in the warehouse at any given time. Now, that's like a really common example. But working with databases themselves is not like most people don't actually just go directly to the database that's not how it works honestly it sounds like a spreadsheet could solve this problem but we're using a website so we can't use a spreadsheet right and this is actually like a real world example imagine like amazon has a bunch of listings on their website for items they they need a database and a lot of other companies need this not even just just like the simple fruit example is enough so what we need is going to be right here. This is going to be our API specifications because we want an API to handle our website being able to talk to the database to update the fruit quantities. So we're going to have three methods for our API, three endpoints. The first one is add. And what this is going to do is add a fruit quantity to the database. So basically, let's say we get 15 apples coming in. We want to be able to use a website. A manager for the warehouse is going to be able to use the website to add 15 apples to our database. So that's a post method, or could even be put. You know, either one actually probably should be put, but we're going to use post right now. And the input for that API endpoint is going to be the fruit name and the quantity. So apples are coming in and there's 15 of them and the output to this is just going to be true or false did it work success or failure then we're going to have subtract which means someone bought the fruit from our website or w we lost some to i don't know some rats ate it <laughs> be a bad warehouse but then that's going to be a subtract path so we subtract from the quantity in the database that's also post that we're saying it's post and we need the fruit name and the quantity let's say we lost two grapes, then that's the fruit name is grapes, the quantity is two, and the output is going to be success, success or failure if the API worked or not. The last method that we're going to use for the website is check, just to check the fruit quantity. Like someone loads a web page for the website, they want to see how many apples we have to sell them, then we just need to know the number. So that method is going to be get because, you know, we're just getting quantity, we're not updating anything. And all we need is the fruit name. We don't need the quantity. And the output for this is going to be quantity. So this is the basic API specification that we have for our API. You understand the situation, obviously. So that's what's going on. And this document is probably good enough for us. But honestly, when you get into like big APIs, you 
that other people are using, you can't just give them this like a little list because that's not good enough at all. What you need to do is you need to have like a really good documentation so that people know how to easily use the API. Because honestly, when you're trying to show people how to use things, they don't want to read like things like this and have guessing work. What you really need to do is give them concrete examples and show them exactly how this works. And Swagger is how you do this. So Swagger is a markup language and basically, you type some markup code in. It's not really code. It's just like a little listing, like HTML, honestly. And it you can specify the API endpoints, descriptions, the methods, the inputs, and the outputs, the responses, all that stuff for APIs. And it's honestly really powerful because this is like really professional way to do it. Honestly, this this would be like making a amazing PowerPoint if you have to present something. Swagger is like the complete correlation to that. That That's how it would work. And this is an example. So Swagger has an example on their website where they have a pet store and you can see that this is, is like what shows up. So they have a pet endpoint and you, you sort of, this is what it looks like. And you're going to see how we do it with our API example. So how do we use Swagger? Well, as mentioned, Swagger is a markup language and basically a markup language is like a .md file but it's not, it's the .yaml file. You could even use JSON but you don't. And the question here is how do you use Swagger because you actually need to know the syntax of it. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, anytime I make these Swagger documents, it's not like I memorize what the document is like, what the language is. It's not like C++ where you have to remember int main, void, stuff like that. What I do when I make a Swagger document is I go to the template page and you can see this is the example that you saw before. So you have the title here, you've got these endpoints, one is slash pet and you know the method name is here, this is post, this is put, this is get. You click it and then inside, you can try it. You can you can look at the what's required from the input, and you can see that you need a body for this particular endpoint. And what you need to give there is an ID, category, name, photo URLs, tags, and then you can see the responses that come. And it can be an XML or a JSON response depending on what your API does. And you can see the codes that are possible: a four or five code invalid input. Now. This is really amazing and you should take the time to look at this, but what's really impressive here and what I do is I just use their example and I change it up a little. So, so you can look right here on the left. Let's see, can I make this a little bigger? Okay. So right here you can see Swagger 2.0 is what they say and you can look at the syntax. This is like the keyword and this is the value. So always leave this the same. Then you've got info which correlates to up here, this info right here. This is a sample server pet store. And anytime you're actually editing a Swagger document, just go ahead and edit it right in here. Don't even like go to a file, just, just do it right in here. So instead of saying this, let's say the, and you see we changed this to the, and right here this, this updates too. So instead of sample, let's say source make, and you can see right here it updates, and it updates in real time. So you can play with this, and that's what I do. I just change all of this around to what I need. Now you can see that you've got info, and that's just like the info at the top of the screen. And description, version of the API, title, terms of service, contact, email, license name. And the important parts are the so I'm going to mention two things just to make it easy for you and everything else you can just look and change it up yourself. Spin off this project to what you need. So the first thing you'll see is tags and tags are basically these like overall tags for what the endpoint is. So in particular you have a pet endpoint and pets do something about your pets and they have a store tag. You can see that right here that says access to pet store orders and that's here. So that's just like the overall category of breaking up what each endpoint does. For us, we only have fruits, but maybe our warehouse also has employees and we want a separate tag for that. Maybe it has, I don't know, trucks that come in for, from specific islands. So maybe you want to break it up like that. You, you would just break up those categories into the tags. And then you say schemes, HTTP, or maybe you can have also HTTPS. So paths are the actual endpoints 
and this would correlate to like this little green box right here. So, so we have a slash pet path and we have a post method for it. So the tag for this is pet, which means that it goes under the pet category. You have a summary which gets shown right here, which is the sort of description. Then you have like a bigger description if you want that's inside of it. So the summary is just like really short for right here, but description can show in here. Then you've got a few things, operation ID, add pet. I never use this, so I don't use this. Consumes is application slash JSON, and it, it could consume XML depending on what the input is that you're allowing the developer to use. You've got produces, you've got parameters, which are, you know, the query parameters. No, actually, actually, the parameters are any type of input. Now, there could be query, which, you know, is part of the question mark, fruit name equals so-and-so, and, and it's part of the URL itself. Then you've got body, which is part of the body of the API. So if you don't know what that is, make sure you watch the last video, but you'll see a little bit, maybe in the next video. You've got a description for that, which is right here, pet object. You've got, is it required? Yes, you actually need to do this if you want to use this endpoint. Then you've got this thing called schema ref, which we'll go to in, in a bit. You've got responses, which is 405, which is the status code and the description of that. And the security I never use, so don't worry about it. Maybe eventually you'll use it. But And then you've got the put method, which is just another method, which is, you can see this orange one. So the next thing that we need to look at and the very last thing is going to be definitions. So you need to define like these JSON schemas and the way you do it is you say, okay, the name of this is going to be order, which which is any any definition is basically JSON. And the way you want to use JSON is you want to have a reference to it anytime you use it inside the document. So I'm not actually going to look at this one. Let's look at ours. So ooh, I shouldn't have this open. Don't worry about that. So back here on our website, I actually defined the fruit store API. And instead of looking at the pet store, you should look at this one because you know what this one's all about. So we're going to copy this. Come on, copy. Work with me, mouse. So you, we're going to copy this and we're going to put it right into the editor. And let me zoom back out a little. And you can see this is our fruit store API. Now, this is exactly what you'd expect. We've got source fruits API is the name. We've got the description right here. We've got the schemes. We've got our add method. And you can see that we've got two parameters and they're going to be in the query because you can see right here it's query. And one is the fruit name and one is the quantity. They're both strings. We've got a little description for them for the user of the API to know when they look at this. We only accept JSON. We've got three response codes. 200 is OK, which means they did a good job. 400 means that the status is success, which means it, it worked. Oh, no, 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 this is part of the 200, sorry. Make sure you go in order. So an example return is status success, which means that it worked. We've got a 400 code, which means bad input information. And we've got a 500 return code, which means internal server area, which is standard. We've got the subtract, which is basically the same thing. And then we've got this getting category where we have check, and this is basically the check thing that we mentioned before. We get the fruit name, we return the fruit name and the quantity is JSON to the user. And you can see I've got all this right here. Now, the one thing that I was going to mention is, let's look at this right here. So the last thing we need to know about for Swagger is definition. So let's look at the success definition, which corresponds to this. So this is a JSON value. But when you look at how we actually define it in the subtract method, we have the 200 response, right? You, you can't see that too well. Let me, let me make this a bit bigger. You have this 200 response in the subtract method right here. And the description says that it's OK. That's, that's what this response means. But what do you return? Well, what you return is this schema. And it's a reference to definition slash success. Now, this is actually part of our swagger document our code and you can see right here in definitions we have the success what is it reference a and this is basically just a json thing that says okay we've got status is what the first value item is and it's a type string and you can get two values from it success or failure 
And you can see that that's de defined right down here in the document. So these are called models. Basically, they model the JSON that might be returned or used as the response bodies or the, what's the other one, request bodies. And that's how you use those. So, so in definitions, you define your JSON and you just throw a reference to them. And you, you can see how this works. I can't go into too many details. Anytime you need to use Swagger, just come to the website, copy this, and change this up to how you need it. You, you can, that's what I do. You can change, you, you can obviously look back and forth and see the name and the description, and you can see where that is right here. So, once you do that, you copy this and you save it to a .yaml file in your project and that's it. Now anyone who wants to look at the API definition can go right to Swagger and they can see this really pretty picture. So that's it. That's Swagger. If, if you, so, so we planned our API, you know, we're running a fruit house, a warehouse that sells fruits and we also get fruits in. We need a few API definitions to work with the database for our website so we can always keep track of the quantity. And we planned out that API, but you saw that this wasn't good enough. And what you need to do is you need to create a Swagger document. And what you do, anytime you need to make a Swagger document, come to this website, copy this code, paste it in here, and change the names and everything that you need right in here in the editor. And you can see it update in real time to whatever your project needs, whatever your endpoints are. Then you copy this and save it to a .yaml file, and that's it. Then anytime anyone needs to use this, they can even come right back to here, to this editor, editor.swagger.io. So that is Swagger, and that's how you use it. We planned our API. This is the second video in the series again. In the next video, we are going to go over how to use Java and how to use Node to actually code this API, which is a really big deal because I'm going to do such a great job on it. It's because I'm going to teach you from the basics. So that's Swagger. If you don't know what it is, now you know. I'm Swiss Make. Go ahead and subscribe. Go to my website. Do everything you need to do to learn this stuff. Thanks for watching.